Hi, and welcome to the History Lessons in Edupedia World. Today, I want to talk to you about the maternity of Elna. This is one of those episodes in history, one of those facts, one of those little miracles that happen when strong people are willing to do anything and sacrifice anything for others in the midst of terrible horrors and situations where people just could not escape sometimes terrible outcome like it was for the refugee, Spanish refugees in concentration camps to not be able to save their children from a certain death. And the maternity of Elna was hope in this dark space. We'll just briefly go again through concentration camps of uh, Spanish refugees before the Second World War and after the Spanish Civil War. If you want to know a bit more about them, please go to previous lessons. Then we'll talk about women and children in the camps, what was their situation, and then we'll discover how this maternity came to happen and what it did for these people. First, Let's go back to Spanish Civil War. That's what people were fleeing for. On 26 January 1939, Barcelona fell to Franco's supporters. And with the fall of the reminder main city, the country followed soon and there was an occupation of the rest of Catalonia within days. Let's remember that Catalonia was the last part to be occupied by the nationalist uh, faction and is the one that shares most of its border in the north with France. At this precise moment, there's an exodus of people that's never seen before in Spanish history. There was the flight of in the entire country nearly, along with thousands of refugees with every corner of Spain, who had already previously sought refuge in Catalonia during the rest of the war, when they were fleeing from Franco's army. At this point, war had been lost and there was exile. It was go leaving the country. The, re the wave of refugees began to put pressure on the French border. And on the 27th of January, there was an authorization to be given passage for civil population and the wounded. Following days, then, the majority of exiles passed into France. We're talking that in barely three weeks, 465,000 people had crossed the border. It's not a surprise that the French cabinet ministers didn't know how to absorb this human wave. But their solution was to create refugee camps in the south of France. The ones in Argelès-sur-Mer and uh, Saint-Cyprien in the Roussillon are the first zones and the most important ones. Here we see a quote from Remy Oliva, an exiled, that crossed the border when she was a child. She said later on, 
The gendarmes led us to the beach at Agilis sur Mer. Here it was only sand, sand and more sand. That's what they found when they were told they had to go into the camps. The living conditions, they were really hard, especially at first, when there was no preparation whatsoever. There was this avalanche of exiles. The majority arrived exhausted after the escape on foot, wounded by closing air attacks and frozen by the rain and snow. By the end of February 1939, Agile sur Mer had more than 80,000 people and back areas, for example, 70,000 people. No, it was just banished beaches without any infrastructure. They were called, not a camps, they were called Centre d'Accueil, that's um, welcoming centers. And these were though just an ordeal of barbed wire, epidemics, hunger, cold, lice, and finally contempt. There were no huts, no shelters, no water, no latrines, no kitchens only the barbed wire, sand and sea. The only thing that they had to protect against the windy days and nights were four or five blankets and they would try to build shacks as you can see in the picture. There wasn't enough for everyone. So they were just in the wind, in the rain, with roofs made of blankets that quickly let the water in and soon people were shivering, teeth chattering and every man's bed was their body in the sand. So how did this affect especially women in children in these camps? Well, seeing the conditions Pregnant women had many difficulties giving birth here, even ensuring just that the baby could survive. And for example, Argelis uh, sur Mer, this, this women were taken to stables near Perpignan station. Well, there were there no sanitary precautions at all, and amongst animal and straw that's where their babies were born mother and child then were immediately sent back to the concentration camps obviously with no type of postnatal protocol that could ensure a minimum chance of survival for that newborn child we know that at birth and the first days and weeks of a child that is born are vital. It's the most vulnerable. Let's also bear in mind that the women were not in good health. So mother was always all, already struggling. Uh, giving birth is dangerous for the women too. You lose lots of blood, you're not in any kind of medical uh, control or any kind of help or minimum uh, sanitary conditions that you would have even in certain tribes in the middle of nowhere. Then, apart from all this that played against them, you had the low temperatures, the lack of drinking water, to make bottles for the babies because many women couldn't lactate they didn't have drinking water some people actually resorted to salt water as in desperate attempt to do something but all this was just a guaranteed death for many babies 
most died of cold and hunger. As cruel as it is, as simple as it was. Here's uh, the record of Marcel de Menac, an exiled woman that ended up giving birth during that time. Not in the camps, but she observed what was happening to other women. Quote, There was one woman who had no milk, and her child cried with hunger day and night. When it tired of crying so much, it slept, and she warmed it with her body. The blankets were still soaked from the really bad days we had in February. When the sun came out, they buried the baby in the sand, leaving only its head sticking out. The sand served as a blanket, but after a few days, the child died of cold and hunger. I was pregnant at just the thought of my child being born into that hell filled me with despair. Here we see what a dear, dire situation these people were in. They had no way to go, no options possible for them. But that luckily changed for a group of people. Here's where the maternity near Argelès came to happen. First, we have to remember and honour one woman that made this possible. This is Elizabeth Aidenbenz. She was born in Zurich in 1913 and worked as a teacher in Switzerland and Denmark until 1938 where she moved to Valencia to work as a volunteer with the, um, in Spanish, it's called the Asociación de Ayuda Suiza a los Niños Víctimas de Guerra. It's a Swiss aid association to children victims of the war. She then collaborated in humanitarian tasks during Spanish Civil War in Republican Zone and then was highly engaged with the exodus of people in 1939 that were passing into France. Her work continued throughout the Second World War and thanks to that she was later on uh, honoured by the government of Israel for her work helping the Jewish people. In Then in 2002 she received the Righteous Among the Nations medal she saved hundreds of lives thanks to her work and in the camps in this maternity she she made possible she saved the lives of every child that was born there she did this to compensate the horrible passivity of the French in the social aid. Thanks to the association she was able to found and start this maternity. Here pregnant women who were in the concentration camps could receive the help they needed during childbirth. The maternity home was on until 1944. She believed that the exiled women deserved to give birth with dignity and it, it was paramount to try and ensure the survival of each baby. So what they did was with a journalist friend they took photographs of the woeful conditions of these pregnant women who, if you remember, were giving birth in stables when they asked to open the maternity home, they used these photographs to intimidate the perfect uh, that didn't want the help out with the authorizations. Within a day, 
having this material to show them and saying that they would use it to show how France was treating the Catalans and the Spanish refugees, within a day they had everything solved. Let's remember that uh, the refugee camps, the mortality rate was around 90%. So their work was extremely important. Here there's a little quote to illustrate a bit what the women that were working in the maternity, how strong, willful they had to be to maintain this and to stop anyone that would try and destroy this project. Joanna Pasquale, an exile that was in the maternity, explained this later on, quote, Senorita Isabel was a woman with a strong character. She would even stand up to the gendarme. And when they came to look for mother, who had already given birth, to take her back to the camp, if she saw she wasn't up to it, she got rid of them saying, this is Switzerland. So, as we were saying, the role of this maternity home was extremely important. 90% of mortality rate. This made the misery of the camps bearable. It was primordial and these babies were saved from certain death. So basically, this worked like this. The mothers were admitted four weeks before the due date and then they were told that they would return to the camps four weeks after. When there was free places, they would stay longer, especially in winter. And Elizabeth Edenbands would always m try and make sure, for example, that their husbands could come out sometimes of the camps that they could find a job, that they could find a way out, and that they would not actually have to go back. In many cases, women didn't go back to the camps, actually. They were finding jobs outside, and it's really remarkable that she would try, the women there, Swiss women would try to find a way to get the husbands out, because they could find e an easier way to find a job and to provide for the family. Obviously, the women also found jobs and ways to take care of their babies and leave those horrendous camps. Elizabeth also, we have to say, war welcomed them all with great warmth that touched all hearts. Even the older children of the women were taken in. So if you were you had a four year old, seven year old with you, you didn't have to leave your children in the camps. It would have been a despair for any woman there. The organization also was quite simple. The mothers themselves depending on their physical condition, would take charge of the domestic chores and round the house or the health care was provided by th three Swiss voluntary nurses who had trained in peda uh, pedagogy, health care, and there was an external midwife and even a doctor for emergency cases. In addition, the logistics of the maternity uh, were assured by the supply of provisions and materials from Switzerland itself. It didn't come from France. So they had the organization's lorries that took advantage of this corridor from the Red International Red Cross and carried the healthcare supplies that were much needed. Towards the end of 1941, 
in light of the limits of financial resources and the large number of births, the association, uh, that was the Swiss Aid Association to Children Victims of the War, that was very specific, ended up accepting an offer to become incorporated directly into the Swiss Red Cross. So when the new agreement came into force in January 19, uh, 1942, the Elna Maternity Home then became the Swiss Red Cross Maternity Hospital. And Elizabeth Eisenberg and her team continued working there until Easter 1944, when the German army closed it. Nowadays, if you're interested, this is an actual picture of the maternity house still today. It's become a museum and you can go and visit the quarters and see some of the stories of these people, that, especially the babies that survived, that are now obviously adults. Their stories and the stories of the mothers and their families and how this work, this maternity, without it, they wouldn't be alive. We know for certain that that is the thing that saved their lives and enabled them to do everything that they've done until now. Just to finish, we go back to Marcel Domenech the exiled that was pregnant in the camps. Quote, After a few weeks in the camp's infirmary hut, I met Elizabeth Aidenbentz, or rather, she met me. She, uh, she suggested I give birth in a maternity home she ran, located in Elna, right there in the Roussillon. The day my son was born in the maternity hospital's delivery room, I could not control my tears. Everyone thought I was crying with everyone thought I was crying with emotion, but I only knew that my thoughts were with a child buried in the sand on the beach in Argelès sur Mer. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. <laughs>